Well, for the most part on Pi 26 Ways, we've concentrated on ways to make our Pi cases stand out, make them a work of art. But today, we're going to focus on making our Pi's disappear, or at least making them easier to manage and easier to place. Let's jump to the design. So the inspiration for today's case came from several comments left on previous videos requesting a VESA compatible mount for their Raspberry Pi. So for those of you who don't know what VESA is, VESA is a standard hole spacing on the back of monitors and television sets that allow you to buy an arm or a wall mount that will attach to your display. It's a universal way of mounting a display to something else. So it seemed like a simple concept, but as I got into the design phase, I found that no matter how I spaced it, the Raspberry Pi was going to overlap with the smallest VESA compatible mount that I could think of. And no matter how I did this, it wasn't gonna turn out clean as a single piece. So then I thought, well, I can split into multiple pieces. And if I'm gonna do that, I want the case to be able to screw onto the back of the mount with no extra hardware required. And this is the initial pass. As you can see, it looks like a standard Raspberry Pi case because, well, more or less, it is. I've included the same GPIO punch out that I've included in previous cases, but I've left the top three pins exposed so you can connect power to your fan without having to remove the entire cover. So then if we, as we rotate it around, you'll see that there is a difference with the back of the unit. If we hide the lid and the base, you see that the back of the unit is an X shape with screw hole spacing at 50, 75, and 100 millimeters. And in the center is a 3D printed thread. This 3D printed thread allows us to screw our actual base for our Pi directly onto the X pattern. But then as I started digging through the design, I realized that the VESA patterns can go all the way up to like 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters, and a standard 3D printer isn't going to be able to print that. But that's when I also realized that a Raspberry Pi is light and it doesn't really need to be attached to all four posts. In fact, we could probably get away with just one. So with that in mind, I started creating additional mount points. So each of these takes a three millimeter or four millimeter, five millimeter, and we can really size that hole to whatever space we want. And instead of having to bolt it to all four, we can bolt it to just one. As I started building on this idea and thinking of a sort of universal mounting method, I thought, well, not only can we have single, but we can also have dual holes. And this would be perfect if you're bolting it to a 3D printer, screwing it under a desk or to a wall, basically anywhere you want to put it. Because that way, as you unscrew the pie case, well, you don't have to worry about this free spinning. So I've got a few concepts tossed out here. So let's 3D print some of them and see how they work. So, after printing my initial design, I decided to test my design by attaching it to the back of an old NEC monitor I had that had both a base and the VESA mount point still exposed. As you can see, this attached quite easily using some M4 bolts, and then I was able to screw the Pi right into place. Next, I moved on to one of the single point mount pieces. I was able to screw it on directly to one of the VESA mount points on the back of the monitor, and once again, the Pi screwed on absolutely no problem. I included a sort of hex shape around the outside of the threaded part so that if you're taking it off and it starts loosening the screw versus loosening the Pi off of the plastic piece, well, you can get a pair of pliers in there, hold it in place, and take the Pi off successfully. Next, I wanted to see how well this would attach to a 3D printer. So here I have my CR10 and I used some M4 screws and some M4 T-nuts and was able to bolt it right to the frame. From there, it was just a matter of screwing the Pi into place. Finally, I wanted to see if we could tuck this away, say under a desk. So I used a couple of wood screws to attach it underneath my desk. And then once again, the Pi screwed right into place like you would expect. It looks like this is gonna work pretty well. And just like that, we have kind of a new spin on an old design. The case is still a very much traditional Raspberry Pi case, but with the addition of the threads in the back, we can now put it wherever we want. Not only that, if you need to be able to move your Pi from place to place to place without too much hassle, well, this is perfect. Just mount these wherever you need them and you can just screw it. As an added bonus, if you need to be able to move your Pi from place to place to place, well, you can print off as many of these as you like, mount them wherever you need them, and then it's just a matter of threading them together when you need to move it around. I 
I've come up with some common designs, including single hole and dual hole with M3, M4, and M5 targeted. And I think this could be the start of a whole ecosystem. This also makes upgrading your Pi ridiculously easy. All you have to do is print the appropriate case for whichever version of the Pi comes out, screw it on where the old one was, and you're good to go. If you're interested in using this design, well, I'm including a link to Thingiverse where you can print your own. So you can hop over there, grab it, and if you do print it, post a make. I love to see other people's prints. We're just getting started here. There's a lot to come, and I think you guys are going to enjoy what I come up with. Well, that's it for this one, and until next week, stay creative.